from my earliest memories, I recalled that I had quite an ordinary and happy childhood. This idea was reinforced by images from photographs. I looked a happy child with smiling, happy mother and father. Nothing could be further from the truth that this was an ordinary childhood. It was much later in adult life when I had the challenge to reimagine my childhood version of my own personality and childhood. In my late 30s and 40s, as I became more interested in our family history, I talked and eventually interviewed and recorded those interviews with my mother and father about both their own childhood experiences and growing up, as well as my own. What I learnt was that our family history was anything but ordinary. By the late 1990s, after my father's passing, my mother gave her nearly four-hour Holocaust history testimony. She was one of the more than 50,000 survivors whose testimony forms part of Spielberg's Visual History Foundation archives. That was the first time that I'd heard my mother's total detailed family story. Prior to that time, I had only heard fragments. Prior to that time, I could therefore only pick up bits and pieces of her life story. Now I felt I could engage with her story in a new and more deeply meaningful way. I decided to explore the nature of her trauma as the source of my own trauma. So I designed a research project based on the well-established tool for infant and child developmental studies. This is called a split screen, where the image of the mother is synchronized with the image of her offspring split in one screen. I use this split screen for my own self-understanding and observation and later self-analysis. I reviewed this video many, many times, perhaps hundreds. Through such close examination and self-analysis of the video, I discovered uh, that I was so overwhelmed by witnessing my mother's testimony that in fact I became disconnected from my own feelings and thoughts. I repeated these cycles many times, and through this process I learnt a great deal about the profound impact of witnessing my mother's testimony had on me. I was to put this lesson to great use in 2005. In 2005, I accompanied my mother along with 70 other participants in what was known as the Adult March of the Living. We returned to Auschwitz-Birkenau concentration camp where my mother saw her own mother Esther and little sister Zhuzhi for the last time in 1944. On the railway landings where she was separated from her mother and sister, my mother Alice gave a short but profoundly moving testimony of her memory of that day. This demanded that I reimagine whatever previous thoughts, feelings and ideas I had about my own mother's extreme experiences during her life. In 2012, my mother and I had another opportunity to reimagine our family history. The very early vague images by now had given way to very clear pictures. 
On this occasion, we celebrated the book launch of The Power of Witnessing, edited by Nancy Goodman and Marilyn Myers. In that chapter, we describe the many paths our journey has taken us as we interrogated both the trauma and the repair that have become so important in shaping our relationship to this point. However, there was yet another chapter. Last year, 2016, my mother invited me to accompany her to see the Academy Award-winning film, Son of Saul. By now I had learned that being exposed to images of the Holocaust really triggered many dissociative and distressive symptoms for me. In order to reduce this risk, I decided to rehearse for the event. I decided to attend the film by myself first, taking notes and studying the notes where I recorded the impact that the scenes had on me. In this way, I thought I would reduce my risk of exposure. Indeed, both my mother and I sat through the film, even as we saw others walk out. We spoke a great deal after the movie. We learned many new ways to regulate our levels of distress and back to safety, to trust, and then distress again. These cycles gave us confidence and a new sense of emerging authenticity to find in each other's company a new sense of belonging and love. On this occasion, we learned what it felt to be safe in each other's company.